rolling. Welcome viewers and praise the Lord. I'm Apostle Daniel Vasonga. I'm honored to be in your presence today to speak to you. And I want to release a prophetic word to, to the nation of Kenya, to the Church of Jesus Christ in Kenya, and partially to the, to the world, and then the government of Kenya and the United States of America. I, we are all acquitted to the recent happenings in the land and the positions that people take in terms of the ideologies of the conversations on the ground. But it's very important that we bring to you what the mind of God is, what is the express word of the Lord. Sometimes we may have also our personal opinions, but sometimes we wait on the Lord to wait on what the Lord will speak. And there's already a perceived uh, uh, status in terms of what is the viewpoint of what the Lord is saying. But today I want to speak from the council on high that sits. I'll, I'll speak uh, what is the word of God, but I'll reduce it to the level of what is called the councils. There's a the dimension of what is called the councils. There's what is called the courts of heaven. And then there are other diversities of the angels. There's the watchers and uh, the diversity of the provisions that are given. But the prophetic word I'm giving here today is in the directness of what the word of God is concerning the land, but is deduced from the complexity of the thinking and the thought process in what is called the councils. And then it merges what is called the prince of the land, the prince that stands in the presence of the Lord concerning Kenya. And therefore, the prophetic word is mapped from this prince. But the main discussions, according to the discourse I'm going to bring to you, is coming from the council on high concerning the matters vis-a-vis -vis the conversations happening on the ground. Now, it's very important for us to understand, especially where we are at in the place of rage, to really define concerning is God together with this government or God is not with this government? Is God with the president or God is not with the president? What exactly is the mind of God and the councils involved concerning the impeachment process that is taking place? What is the mind of God concerning what the church ought to do and the situation that is taking place in the land? What exactly is the mind of God concerning the process and the political process taking place in the land? It's very important, my first experience concerning this government and knowing who will be the president and some of the things that are becoming quite a discussion in these days, men of God being hit concerning prophesying about governments, elections and such. But I want you to understand the nature of God and the character of the spirit is not in the limitations or the arguments of the moment, but we need to understand the higher dimensions of truths and the involvement of God even concerning political, political processes. In 2018 is the first time God spoke to me concerning the leadership of President Ruth and said, this man shall come into power and then the time shall come into power, there shall be a situation, economic situation, the economy will be dilapidated. And he spoke to me concerning particular things that will take place, the shakings that will take place, the hardness that will take place, and particular things also if we position ourselves, how God will open heaven and will astonish the land of Kenya. Part of it is depending on the magnitude of the maturity of the capacity of our ability to draw the virtue of God, some of it can be solved based on the semantics on what is the regular systems available to mitigate uh, situations, but there's a dimension that carries the dimension of the of, of, of the supernatural, like in the days of Moses, how he could fix situations concerning land, but this needs to raise an impetus, especially in the ranks of knowledge of understanding what exactly is happening in the spiritual realm and be able to deduce it into the natural realm. I'm speaking some parts of what is of the watchers and what is of the prince and part of it, what is the council, that eventually begin to see the argument that's taking place, even in the minds of the citizens of this country, to be able to know what we're supposed to do. Now, my first word to the church of Jesus Christ is go back and mingle with the government. Go back and mingle with the government and carry the shame. Dip yourself into the shame and begin to fix yourself or begin to mingle yourself. Carry equally the shame that you may also carry the glory of the margins. I know sometimes we have, we have these kinds of opinions regarding uh, men of God, uh, entangling themselves with government and such and uh, is, is a moment of what I call the, uh, theological crisis and this theological crisis is very important that we may understand that the fusion or the mandate of what we want to partake of we cannot only partake of the glory if you cannot manage to partake of the shame. The thing that are supposed to be involved you understand most of the people from the prophetic spectrum 
have been speaking in regarding this matter based on the prophetic word that they received concerning the revival that God wants to do in Kenya. This revival is very important because you have to understand the moment you begin to trigger the spiritual dimensions to make a call and say revival, one of the places where the church has been taken, intercepted in this kind of battle is the battle of intelligence. Paul writes and says, we do not war against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And every rank of this definition has a different ball game. You have to play, you have to defeat these forces by a different ball game. I know for the part, most part of the church, they understand the ball game where you tackle matters by rebuke, casting down, dealing with the strongholds or whatever, but even the way they are dealt with is not according to design. I've not got in the place of teaching, I just make mentions, then eventually the time we get to place of teaching these concepts in, 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 in the details. When you speak about this, it means when people made a provocation concerning revival, it means this particular spirit that managed to rise up and begin to bring the ball game into a higher dimension, which is called like maybe the spiritual weakness that demands that the warfare of your battles ought to understand spiritual intelligence, that you get in the place where you wage war the, wage, the waging war of ba the battles of wisdoms, the waging of the battles of strategy that has to be inculcated, including the carnal dimension, the waging of understanding the mystery history of leverage, understanding where we are coming from, where we are at, and where we are heading to. Not everything shall be fixed at the same time. Most of the things that you think that the government is doing against the people, most of them, I'm not saying that they, not everything is, is, is not, 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 uh, I'm not saying that everything is already in place rightfully, but I'm saying most of the things is not necessarily evil. As much as people cry concerning oppression, some of the things is not necessarily oppression. It's more of the understanding of where we are at, we are supposed to head to and the pressure, this pressure is not only localized in this country, this pressure cuts across the globe and the nations are in a place where people are pressed. It's not only the pressing, it's not about the pressing of the government, it's about the pressing of what is. And if we don't reculture ourselves to come to through these cycles and to begin to redefine the understanding, we may be enraged and not knowing that whatever we do, we may be jumping from the pan into the very fire by itself. We may be turning against, we may be wanting to express ourselves in the way we feel best, but in some times, we may be taken captive. We have to understand the church, and you need to understand that when you began to make a provocation concerning revival, it means the battle shifted. The spirit that were lying down before eventually have realized what you're trying to awaken and eventually comes in in a different wave of which for some reasons some has managed even to, part, to sweep off even the prophets, not to stand with the mandate and to defend the soul of the nation until they bring forth the bathing into the place you're supposed to be. Yes, we have had the cries of the people and people People talk about sometimes the function of the church concerning the social justice. There's a the part of the social justice, but you have to understand also the era that you're living in and the humanitarian or the culture of the humans is not easy thing to deal with humans, especially when they border the animalistic dimension. Governments have got responsibility to organize societies and sometimes what they take or deploy to ensure there's balance is not necessarily something that is comfortable in terms of your social justice systems. And you see, it does not necessarily mean that God's hand has risen against them because of this. Because no government, especially I can say about this government, this government of yours is not necessarily intentioned. I'm speaking about the intention. It's not intention to bring its people into oppression. It's not intention to bring its people into a place of a burden. But in all things, there is the seeking of solution. It's very important that you come to the place of understanding that the church entering the place of intelligence, getting into the mark also, and and being able to rise not only as a church but the church bearing also the government upon your shoulders now there is a lot of marauding spirits also that utilize the same window you need to understand this that whenever god opens a nation or any spirit is open a nation that the soul of the nation is in a spiritual market and i've been speaking this for some time the soul of the land of kenya has been on a spiritual market it means the forces the strongest that were there before want to maintain their hold the forces that are not there before that have realized the opening also want to utilize that window but also god wants us to utilize that window but also god depends upon his people god cannot move except we understand the spectrums of raising particular kinds of standards decorum and ability to enforce the wisdoms of God to inculcate them into the natural space. If we resign to the place of what the masses are talking because 
of wanting to be right with the masses, we may be right with the masses, but the, the plague may still be biting. It's very important for the church to come to the place of beginning to trust God for extraordinary supernatural interventions concerning the land and wisdom descending, the opening of the portals of heaven, and being a blessing to the land and standing in the defense of the soul of the nation and against all arguments of the spirit until you bring what God has spoken to the land into the place of, um, of, of, um, of, 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 of the promise. Now, there are particular things that are constants in terms of the disciplines. I know right now we are going through the process that's called the impeachment and such, and I will tackle that a bit. It's not the intention of God that we may have gotten to this particular place. And it does not necessarily mean that it's not permissible unto God. There are principles that are involved with the place of governance, the place of rebellion that is involved, how God views rebellion, how God sees misfirings, how God sees repentance, the repentance out of the heart that goes to God, but there's particular things that eventually in the natural have to take place. Now, understand we're talking about the political realm. It's very serious of the things that are taking place, and it's very important that the nation does not get in the place of infuriation, but in all stability, we understand the pain of the families, what they're going through in, the, in terms of the political positions that they had, in terms of the things that people think. And, but you have also to understand the executions of mandate, the carriers of political infrastructures are not just to flow according to the, to the simple every form of argument. There is particular incalculated infrastructure of how to understand the movements according to the political spectrum and what is necessary and important concerning the nation. The righteous sometimes may come to a place of being beaten also because of misfirings. There's intentions in every single place sometimes to withdraw from ev eventually the force that has been laid across to begin to move, but you need to understand also that the hand of God or the councils that sit in the mid heavens to begin to speak that have been permitted in terms of the infrastructure to sustain the cosmos or the atmospheric realities concerning the land has got the mind of God to understand, to infuse and to execute Partially some things that may not be, uh, be comfortable for some people, but some things must we must go through that kind of process. I want you to understand, Kenyans, that the going through this kind of process is not necessarily in vain. It has brought us to a particular dimension of political evolution. And I will not speak much into that space for now, but more so that the Lord's hand may be upon all the afflicted, that may their hearts may be healed, because also the love of God is upon them. But in the place of the realms of argument and thought process and infrastructure concerning concepts, philosophies, and the flow of particular things, there, there's a breach of particular things that has exposed particular individuals to the things that are happening, and still the councils that I speak about has got the approval to pass what is taking place in the land. is a tight place, including the leader of this country. One of the things that has been in the place of argument is that the Lord's hand has departed from the government. I want to stand here as of now as I'm speaking, in according to the prince that stands before the Lord concerning the land, the hand of God is still in favor concerning this government. And there's a lot of things that still the government of Kenya has favor with God. You may have infuriations concerning the masses. You want to understand that the spiritual battles one of the things that is utilized, you understand, in the political realm, in the political realm, there's an aspect that is permissible in that space that they utilize what is called the, the, uh, the, the political propaganda. And the end of the enemy also understands that the frequency of the masses also flows low in terms of where they cannot perceive the future and they're able to see short-sighted and they're able to be infuriated and they're able to be turned and to become tantramic. My prayer is that concerning this thing, for instance, there's a provision that is in our constitution that's called public participation. And I want to make a, a, a mention here a bit. It's important for the citizens of the country to understand when we have had this kind of a provision called public participation, it's very important that all the citizens also take it upon themselves to accelerate in their intelligence because some of the things that have been seen is as though many have spoken concerning what they desire, but the frequency of how they fire thought-wise is still in the level of the animalistic dimension, where they come up with the tantrums, infuriated, and they speak like animals, not even basic human level. I understand 
understand. Now, this one I speak because I'm a preacher, so that you may understand. I know the politicians cannot speak that will say they're insulting you, but it is your responsibility as a person to engage your free will, and the place of the engaging your free will is also impossibility, your, your, your responsibility that you may bring the frequency of your firing to become as though one that legislates in the furtherance of the nation to the place of corporate profitability, corporate prosperity, and corporate breakthrough in the fronts that you are coming into. It needs the spirit of eldership. Do not permit the move that you understand is as though they are children. That's called the Gen Z kind of movement. It has no power to lead. As much as people ride that wave, without elders coming into the place to grant foundation, the children, as much as they have the arguments of what they perceive, do not necessarily have the incalculation. There's the part of the young ones to do and the part of the elders to understand that the faces have shifted so that they can now deploy the resourcefulness in terms of their eldership to activate particular things that may foster the prosperity and open the front for this nation. My prayer is that you may understand that the hand of God is still upon this land. And my other prayer is that the prophets let not your tongue be turned around because the enemy also seeks to harvest virtue from the power of your tongue to utilize the pain of the moment and the complaints of the moment that you may be swept around and forget to hold the nation until there's the breaking forth. They, in the midst of all these kind of shakings, gets forth and begin to bring this land, the land of promise. I use one, one example a bit in closing concerning the nation. The 12 spies that Moses sent, the 12 spies that Moses sent to, to spy the promised land, look at these 12 spies as categories of 12 kinds of prophets. Is the 12 prophets that go into the promised land and they need to come and bring a report that's going to deliver the children of Israel into the promised land. You all know the story. Ten speak contrary as they say the land is occupied with giants, which actually according to philosophical spectrum, they're speaking the truth. Two of them speak contrary. They say, let us go in first. You see, according to the observation, the two are actually speaking like a lie in respect to where they're supposed to go. But according to God, the two of them that were speaking contrary to the, the objective or contrary to the, to the data, they are speaking the mind of God and they're the ones whom the children of Israel were supposed to anchor on. You realize they're not anchored on the two, they're anchored on the ten. And it cost them 40 years to go through the promise into the promised land. Understand this, what exactly am I speaking concerning this? It means the patterns are already laid for us in the scripture that out of the, stati the statistics is that if the 12 prophets are supposed to go into the promised land and bring us a report, 10 of them shall lead us astray. And two have the right spirit that shall deliver us into the promised land. There are many things to speak about the nation, but the spirit of the Lord is still hovering upon the land and the prophets arise in the power and prophesy consistently until the nation is brought to her birth. Bless the leadership of the nation, begin to, infu begin to get in the place of cooperation and leverage in some levels and be able to have room to have your nest in that place and activate wisdoms, the wisdom of the learned and the decorum that is fit for the political spectrum that you may be able to raise the standard and your counsel shall be heeded to because you shall bring this land into her deliverance. I will speak in, in the other dimensions that are involved, the interferences from the uh, international spectrum, the United States of America and such, and uh, there's a lot of things all can see of infestations, but this is part of the battles in terms of how they're inculcated in the spirit. Understand this. I remember I prophesied in 2016, 2015, from 2015, I began to prophesy concerning the presidency of Donald Trump. And in my prophecy, I said he shall rule for two terms. And it didn't happen that way. Now, I'll speak to you concerning this. What... I had never shared in the public domain. When I spoken that and I began prophesying and the elections were nearing, I was walking in the city of Nairobi on Monrovia Street and at that point the skies opened, the heavens opened and two creatures came down. These two creatures, they came and began ask me that who are you to speak concerning the territory of the United States of America. One of them, their, their, their nature was looking like the aliens, they, these images of the aliens, they were looking like that. One of them was in standing for what is called mass delusion Another one was for media hysteria. This called uh, this called mass media delusion and mass hysteria. So in that short encounter of these entities, I was beaten to some degree. The the impact of the attack 
became so severe that I was almost dying in less than two minutes. In one minute, I'm okay. In the next minute, I'm one that is dying. I was walking with my, with my fiancé at that time on the streets. And I managed to defeat that spirit, those spirits within a space of around, um, the, it, it raged the battle for around one and a half hours and I was able to defeat them and I got healed and restored, but these spirits waited for a while. When it came to the second time, I began to prophesy and say, Trump shall win again, and you all know how it went. Many prophets that have said that, they went ahead to say that uh, they did not hear clearly from God. They say that uh, they repented for what they have prophesied. I insisted that I had clearly. I did not repent from what I had said. It took uh, over a year later is when God came and began pointing out some things concerning that, not God in himself, but an angel. And he pointed out and said, you remember the same force that you met that is called mass hysteria and media delusion that you met. That is the same force that went for a while and came in the next phase and you could not match them. Then he said this, that I've permitted the prophetics to be challenged so that the church may be opened up to another dimensions of the challenges of the involvement of the prophetic word in the scaling of the layering of entering the place to begin to tackle spiritual weakness in high places and the, in the place of the battles of wisdoms and the rulerships in terms of the, 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 the strategic infrastructure, understanding battles in a different rank, to have displacements of the forces. I know we've been used to prophesying and God will, will come and do it, but God is exercising our senses. And that's why you see sometimes we are permitted for our prophetic to be challenged so that we may exercise our senses to open the next front of involvement in the agenda agenda of God concerning the prophetic dimension. There's a lot of things to speak concerning that. Now, these things we have been exposed to. There's a lot of things that is taking place. The U.S. elections is near, but it carries so much as to who wins the election. There is one who, if he wins, in terms of the, the spectrum, of, if you understand these things in terms of a matrix, there's objective personified of which everyone has their free will in terms of the objective observation and rebuttals concerning concept development. But it means there's a lot concerning councils and what choices are made. And from the, my standpoint is, there is the need of the return of President Trump into power in the short term that is coming. And having him to stand and not have to interfere in terms of how the presidents in the United States of America interfere with other nations. And the church needs to utilize that window for a short period to exercise yourself and come in the place of being seasoned and having enough muscles for the things that are ahead of us. Having said this, the prayer is that there's a move of God that is coming upon the nation of Kenya. There's a revival that is awaiting, but you need to understand the blueprints of this revival is not as has ever been since the foundation of the world. And you need to understand the blueprint and especially the teachers of the word need to begin to bring in new scrolls and to begin to bring the definitions of the potency of the infrastructure that shall be the containing power concerning the revival that is coming. Uh, the Lord be with you, the people of Kenya, as you pray and as you seek. And as you engage yourselves, even the things that were painful before, to begin to exercise your senses to step into the place of the nestedness of your ability to stand in the place where God has given you the mandate that you may bring the wielding of the power of God. Watch this also, that you may not be drawn into the forces of the gods of your traditional gods, that you may be tipped to enter and return to your worship your traditional gods and exalt them above the Lord. The Lord loves Kenya. His mandate is still upon Kenya. His spirit is hovering upon Kenya. And if there shall be a fast foot and a quorum of a prophetic front that shall be followed by the teacher that shall follow and shall be able to bring the land into a spectrum, there shall be an electromagnetic field from heaven that shall be able to build the containing force that God may visit the land and visit that vessel and pour in the oil and awaken the move of the Spirit, and the nation shall be healed. Let the president know that the hand of the Lord is upon you. Do not be confused because of the battering of the tongues that curse and such. The hand of the Lord is upon you. Keep on focus and pray and call upon the name of the Lord, and it shall bring forth your deliverance. Wisdom shall be given. Uh, there shall be emergence of elders that shall be able to help in terms of building the infrastructure to understand rectifications of policies and bringing the, the societies into another place of the next evolution of the breakthrough of the land. Seize from your bitterness, people of, of Kenya, and begin to trust God 
to do for you things that you may be a different nation from the nations of the world. If you are crying, it will be the same as the nations of the world. It means what shall befall them shall befall you also. And as much as governments may want to help you, you may beat them all you want, but it does not necessarily suffice to raise the impetus for the virtue that shall bring forth the deliverance that you seek. Look unto God and raise your governments in prayer that the Lord may come into you and into your leaderships that you may bring forth the posterity of the land. God bless you. God bless Kenya. God bless the nations of the world. God bless the church as we enter the next front of our understanding of our intelligence in the dealings in the spirit and raising the impetus for the standards of the things and the glory of God is supposed to land upon us in the short time to come. The Lord will be with you and he shall raise in this land a people such as has not been seen from the foundations of the world. He shall raise in this land a prophet that shall be able to create oil wells. He shall raise from this land prophets that shall be able to reverse earthquakes. He shall be able to raise prophets that shall minister by signs and wonders that people of the land may know that God is with them and the hope of your desire shall be fulfilled. But you must deploy or you must employ this virtue into God that you have a harvest when he shall send you deliverers in the short time to come. The Lord be with you and prosper you in Jesus' name. Shalom.